Rebels, it's Movie Monday, and today we headed north to Magnuson Superchargers to figure out how to get more power for your rig. Hey, Matt. Hey, Bond. How you doing? Good. Thanks for having Rebel Off-Road down to Magnuson Superchargers today. Thanks for coming. Why don't we take a tour of the facility, and I can show you how a Magnuson Supercharger is built. Looking forward to it. Let's do it. Well, we're here in R&D, and this is where we start the design of our supercharger kits. And you can see here, actually, we're looking at the lower manifold from our Jeep 3.6 liter kit. So we typically will start with uh, the manufacturer's CAD. So we'll get CAD from Chrysler or GM or whatnot. Uh, that'll get us to a certain point. We'll be able to design the main unit. And then we'll actually bring a car in for test fitment. Sometimes we'll do a 3D scan of the entire engine bay because we want to pick up every little detail. Our goal is to make something that looks like it belongs in the engine bay and that fits like it does in an OEM vehicle. What we'll do next when we come out of CAD is we'll do 3D printing. Everything from something this size to an entire unit. And then from there we'll actually go to a metal casting, what's sometimes called a first article. So we'll actually do, this is what we'll do the calibration on. We'll do the full metal piece as sort of the first run. We'll fit that on the vehicle. We'll fit up all the brackets and all the intercooling and everything like that. And we'll do our calibration and run in on that. This is our engineering machine shop. So here's where we do our first prototypes of everything that we build. So this is where we'll do um, the first supercharger unit that gets fit on a vehicle. So in here we can do everything. Uh, we have a full machine shop. Uh, we can do uh, welding, brazing, pretty much anything we need to to build that first one that'll go on the vehicle. Because like I said, the, the CAD is never 100% accurate that we get from a vehicle manufacturer. Sometimes it might be missing certain proprietary details. So we'll actually need on everything we do to get a car in here the first time and do a full fit up and make sure that it fits OE. Right here we're in our warehouse and our quality control area. Every critical component uh, that comes in the building or that's manufactured here is tested. So everything's checked for tolerances, anything that's going to hold pressure, uh, like anything with the intercooler system or with the fuel system is checked and pressure tested. We also hold a lot of inventory here. Um, we want to be able to you know, build virtually any system and we support something like 200 different uh, vehicle configurations, right? Um, so we need to be able to build them in short order, which means we need to be able to keep a lot of inventory and a lot of parts here. So here we are in our machine shop. So you can see right here, here are some of the nose covers from our Jeep Pentastar 3.6 liter kit. So here they are in the raw casting form. So they'll get machined off. We'll remove the flashings and so on and so forth. So this is actually what's at the front of the supercharger kit. The sh input shaft and pulley in here. This hooks up to the stock air box. And here we have the lower manifold right here. So this is what actually bolts up to the cylinder head. So you unbolt your existing manifold. You know, you would bolt this on and then the supercharger sits on top of it. Again here, this is in raw form. So this is gonna go through our CNC shop. These are gonna get milled off. These are gonna get cleaned up. Flashings cleaned up and everything. And then this gets bolted to the 1320 blower that sits on top that makes up your supercharger kit. So all the castings are done here in the US, many of them done here in California, in fact. We live to OE quality standards here. Um, so all of our tolerances and everything we do is uh, the same whether we're doing an aftermarket supercharger or an OEM supercharger like we do with Toyota. So what you're seeing here is something that not a lot of people get to see. This is an Eaton TVS rotor pack here. This is actually a 1900. Uh, so this is actually the heart of what goes inside the supercharger that makes power. So the big difference with a, an Eaton style supercharger and anything else on the market is it doesn't need to build boost, right? So an Eaton rotor pack, 
pushes the air through. It doesn't actually compress it because whenever you compress air, you make heat. So that's one of the things that makes the Eaton rotor pack so efficient. So it's just pushing the air through and then it's building the pressure once it gets into the manifold. The tolerances are so tight that they actually put an abradable powder coat on these. So once you spin it up for the first time, a little bit of the powder coat will wear off and it creates a perfect seal with the rotors together and with the housing. So you get no air leakage to speak of past the rotors. The other thing that we'll look at later is we'll look at the bypass valve. So every Eaton or every Magnuson supercharger has a bypass valve system. So one of the things people talk about in kind of old school root superchargers is the fact that it's creating a drag on the engine. It's running off the uh, accessory belt, right? On these, they actually have a bypass valve. So when you're on vacuum, when you're not on boost, the bypass valve opens. The air is basically going straight through. It's not spinning the rotors. So you have no parasitic drag to speak of on the engine. So basically you're getting the same economy, the same fuel economy as when before you put the supercharger on. So you're not actually using any more gas until you really get on it. So now we're in the final assembly area. So this is where the whole supercharger kit comes together. The actual supercharger gets buried with the manifold and it also gets buried with the box, what we call the box two, which is the fit kit. So that's the intercooler system, the fuel rails, bracketry. Uh, the bracketry, everything that you need to make a complete kit. Every one of the kits that we sell is a complete kit, includes tuning, meaning that you could even install it in your garage. You basically get everything you need in the box. Now something important to note here is that every one of our systems gets spun up and tested before it goes out the door. Not spot checked, but every one gets tested, pressure tested and tested for noise on a test stand before it leaves the building. So this is our test room. Every single one of the supercharger kits that leaves our building gets spun up on one of these test stands. So here we're looking for making sure that it makes boost. There's no pressure leaks. Uh, we also check for noise here. Noise would be indicative of a problem, so we want to catch that before it leaves the building. So we've been outside to our production facility to see how a supercharger gets made. Now we're here in our calibration department, and this is where the other half of the magical equation happens. We have an engine dyno and a chassis dyno. We're standing here in the engine dyno room because our chassis dyno is being used for a top secret project right now. But really the key to drivability a good part of it is here in the calibration. So we live to OEM standards of, of calibration. So we're not just tuning for maximum power, that's only part of it. But you have to be able to live with the vehicle day to day. So our calibrators come from the OEM world and we do OEM level testing. So we do a very exhaustive uh, driving analysis. Several of us will do that. We'll do a circuit for every vehicle that we, that we calibrate for because we want to make sure that you can live with the vehicle day to day. So it's not going to hiccup or burp or, you know, uh, idle roughly. We look for idle smoothness and just day-to-day -day drivability, slow speed drivability, as well as all on power. So what we're looking at here is our Jeep 3.8 system. It actually uses the same 1320 rotor pack as the 3.6, meaning it's pushing roughly 1.3 liters of air for every revolution into the engine. This is what we call a side mount unit. One of the reasons we did this on the 3.8 is we have a little less room to work with under the hood blower sits a little bit higher so we mount it on the side to be able to fit completely under hood. The basic principles are the same though. Pulley spins the rotors, draws air into the motor 1.3 liters at every revolution. Now every one of our kits is also uh, water to air intercooled so the intercooler brick actually sits right here in the manifold. Now on the 3.6 kit where the blower unit sits on top, intercooler brick sits directly underneath. It's a bit of a myth that superchargers run hot. They actually, an Eaton TVS actually doesn't because it's not compressing the air inside the uh, supercharger. It's actually compressing once it gets into the manifold. But the more you cool the charge, the more power you make. So it runs its own completely separate intercooler system. So it has a separate reservoir and pump that runs coolant and we run a what's called a low temp radiator or some people call a heat exchanger out in front of the vehicle. That's where it gets fresh cold air and it's helping this intercooler work. One of the very unique features about the Magnuson Superchargers is the fact that it has an internal bypass valve. Now I know you guys are thinking in the Jeep world and the off-road world is uh, internal bypasses as in shocks. No, we're talking about internal bypasses when it comes to a blower. Can you explain to us how it actually works? Yeah, absolutely. So this is the air inlet. So air's coming in here, and when you're on boost, 
the rotors are spinning, it's building a charge back here in the manifold, and that's where you get your instant boost from. Now, with a, a Magnuson, with the Eaton TVS system, you kind of get the best of both worlds, because when you're not on boost, this butterfly valve opens here when there's vacuum, it features a bypass valve system. This is very unique to any Magnuson and any Eaton uh, style supercharger kit. So when it's got vacuum, this actually opens up and so the air is creating a pass straight into the uh, motor. So when you're just driving around town, it feels like your truck or car did before it was supercharged. Basically the air is creating a pass straight into here. It's not turning the rotors. Therefore, it's not creating a drag on the engine on the accessory drive. So it uses something like a quarter of a horsepower basically when it's freewheeling like this. Basically negligible. So we've had instances where we get the same fuel economy. You know, if you're just cruising down the highway, you're getting the same fuel economy you did before. But when you get on it, this closes shut, you get instant boost and you get that instant power. The reality of it is when it comes to the daily operation of your vehicle, whether it be your truck, Jeep or SUV, it's nice to have a lot more power. And that power, especially when the vehicle has been modified with bigger tires, wheels, axles and other accessories that are actually going to bog the vehicle down. So it makes a lot of sense to look at a kit such as the Magnuson Superchargers that are going to be direct bolt-ons and they're actually very easy to install. Rebel Off-Road has got a great relationship with Magnuson Superchargers and one of the reasons for those is the fact that these superchargers are not designed to hurt the motor in any way, shape or form. Realistically, these vehicles are designed to go over 100,000 miles with OE specifications. What does that mean to you guys? Well, it means a lot. It means if you're pulling on a Magnuson supercharger, you don't have to worry about the issues of how's the vehicle going to be driving. These are actually designed for daily driven vehicles. A couple of the other great features about the Magnuson superchargers is they are actually 100% carb legal. In fact, they do over 200 applications, and which 99% of them are actually carb legal. I actually run on my own personal vehicle, and I love the fact that when I'm on the gas, it comes on strong. When I'm crawling, it's got a very good control, and a lot of that has to do with the type of tune that they put in. The car is not hiccuping, my jeep is not misbehaving, and when I'm on the rocks playing, I can come on nice and easy. Our kits come complete with everything you need. You can actually install one of these in eight to 10 hours, and one of the great things is there's no cutting involved. This will bolt on to the factory manifold location and we provide everything, every last bolt and washer and even the tune on a handheld. So you could conceivably do the whole install in your garage if you had a nice weekend to do it or a shop like Rebel Off-Road would do it in about eight hours. Magnuson superchargers are really a set it and forget it power adder. You won't even have to touch anything in the supercharger for between 100 and 120,000 miles. The only change you have to make to your lifestyle is you're going to run 91 octane. Can you tell us a little bit about the warranty on the units? Yeah, absolutely. They come with a three year, 36,000 mile warranty from the time of the install on all the parts. Um, and as you say, they have a service life of 100,000 miles. Up to 100,000 miles, you don't even have to change the oil on these things. The number one question we get are, what are the numbers? What does a Magnuson supercharger produce? Right. And on a Jeep, like a Jeep 3.6 or a Jeep 3.8, you can count on anywhere from a 25 to 40% power increase. So even with our six pound kit, completely emissions legal, we're seeing numbers like 280 up to 320 to the wheels of a 3.6. And that's roughly a 100 horsepower gain from something that you just simply bolt on. And one of the best things about it is the way a Magnuson makes power. So because it's pushing the same revolution of error, it doesn't need to spin up. It doesn't need to spool to make power, right? Right from down low, 1500 to 2000 RPMs, it's making boost right away and it's adding a boatload of torque. So you get this nice broad torque curve as well as the top end power. So we're seeing, you know, 260 plus, 270 foot pounds of torque as well as 280 to 320 horsepower at the wheels. So we're talking about a Jeep that's roughly 400 horsepower. Matt, that was awesome. Thank you for taking the time to show Rebel Off-Road your facilities down here. Anytime. You got a little sneak peek behind the scenes. Not everybody gets to see of how a supercharger gets made from front to finish. And if you want to learn more about Magnuson superchargers and especially our Jeep 3.6 and 3.8 kit, check out rebeloffroad.com. So this is our five axis uh, horizontal CNC machine. I'm sorry, is it a four? Four axis. But what we do here is the, the calib... This butterfly valve opens here when there's vacuum. I knew I would do that. Now we have a good outtake. We provide everything you need. <laughs> so 
lost my rhythm. 